Good afternoon. Welcome to Mass. Thank you so much for joining us today uh, for announcements. Uh, we know last week was kind of very weird for weather. Um, so school got canceled quite a bit. And uh, one of the things that got canceled was our Holy Hour for Vocations. That was on Thursday night. There was several people who joined me in prayer, but um, uh, the Archbishop really wanted to cancel it for that for this past Thursday. So we're, we're not going to cancel, I guess we're going to postpone it. Um, we're working on rescheduling a date uh, later on, um, maybe towards May-ish or late April or May. Uh, so keep, keep uh, an eye out and ear out for uh, the next Holy Hour for Vocation here in Makokoda um, in a couple of months. I uh, wanted to mention that next weekend uh, is blood pressure weekend. Um, if you remember, we've been We've paused that for uh, several years now, but we're going to start that up again um, starting next weekend. It'll be the, the opportunity to get your blood pressure read uh, once a month here at Sacred Heart um, starting next weekend. Next weekend. Uh, back at church, we are selling on NCYC raffle tickets again. Uh, that drawing is coming up relatively soon, so uh, make sure to pick up your raffle tickets in the next, uh, this next short little while. Um, also, I wanted to mention Kindergarten Roundup is right around the corner. Uh, that's this Thursday. So if you have any kindergartners that are, well, that will going to be, that any children are going to, that are going to be entering into kindergarten um, next year, uh, you're welcome to send them to uh, Kindergarten Roundup, which is this Thursday at 6.30, 6.30 in the evening. This Thursday is Kindergarten Roundup at Sacred Heart. And finally, we do have uh, some sweets and treats in the back of church after Mass. Uh, for you to enjoy, um, so feel free to have some, some good old sugar uh, after Mass. Uh, but let us stand and let us greet our neighbor. And for our opening song, let us join in singing number 115, Ashes, number 115. We rise again from ashes, from the good we fail to do. We rise again from ashes, redeemed, O Lord, by you. Our penance, Lord, our sorrow, our grieving hearts renew. An offering of ashes, an offering to you. We offer you our failures. We offer you attempts. The gifts not fully given. The dreams not fully dreamt. Our stumblings give direction, our visions wider view, an offering of ashes, an offering to you. Then raise us up from ashes, your healing ease our pain. Though spring has turned to winter and sunshine turned to rain, your rain will nurture growing and create our world anew. An offering of ashes, an offering to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
The Lord be with you. And with you. My brothers and my sisters, as we gather together today to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food. With the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, You shall not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eye and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response for the re responsorial psalm, Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A clean heart create for me, O God and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be, Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. sinned. 
Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sin. For if by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. In conclusion, just as through one transgression condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act acquittal and life came upon all. For just as through the disobedience of the one man the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. in your heart and your lips and proclaim this holy gospel worthily and well. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Praise you, o Lord. At that time... Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached him, approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, One does not live on bread alone but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their magnificence. And he said to him, All these I shall give to you if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this Jesus said to him, Get away, Satan. It is written, The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
I went over to school this past week, and in the midst of my conversation with the children, they were asking what I should give up for Lent. Now, obviously, you know what they're going to say. What should Father give up for Lent? Uh, you all know what Father should give up, uh, pumpkin pie. Um, and I honestly don't know if I could do that. I don't know. But after hearing them say that they're going to give up school or they're going to give up homework for Lent, um, I, I told them that it should be something hard. It should be something meaningful that actually challenges you. And my own words, they screamed right in my face. But to be honest, if I were to give up pumpkin stuff during Lent, it would be easier than any other time of the year. It's probably about halfway between pumpkin seasons. Um, we all know the struggles of Lent. First, we have to figure out what we're going to do for Lent, but we have to fast. We have to abstain from meat on Fridays. It's hard. Uh, doing some sort of penitential act. And I wonder if this is anything like, the, like what the devil tempted Jesus with in the desert. And I have no doubt the temptations offered to Christ were just as alluring and designed to make his mouth water. Whatever they entailed, there were things that all of us would recognize. That's one reason why Jesus resisted them. In Matthew's account, there are three particular temptations. And when you break them down, they amount to hunger, the amount to power, and the absence of pain. Those three are three of the most urgent desires we can have. They go to the heart of who we are. Hunger. It can be more than just craving for a hamburger on a Friday or a pumpkin pie during Lent. It could be hunger for love. It could be hunger for attention or approval, acceptance. Power. Power is more than just about ambition or world domination or a celebrity. It's also about control. About not being accountable to anyone. And being able to do what you want, whenever you want, however you want. And the absence of pain is more than just being protected by angels as you get thrown off a cliff. It's also about never feeling, feeling hardship or sickness or sorrow. Think of what the devil's offering to Jesus today. Total satisfaction, absolute power, total protection and comfort and ease. This would be irresistible to all of us, but not to Jesus. And say no to these temptations and not giving in to them. Christ is saying yes to being one of us. He's saying, I know what it's like to be hungry and to crave something I just can't have. He's saying, I know what it's like to want power, but to be powerless. He's saying, I know what it is like to hurt, to bleed and to die. And so as this earthly ministry unfolds, he'll share our hardship, our frustrations, our temptations and trials. He'll know what it's like to weep at the death of his close friends. He'll know what it's like to be powerless and held captive as he's led to the last mile on cavalry in chains. He'll know all that we know, feel all that we feel, a man like us in all things but sin. But the devil didn't stop testing him. And he doesn't stop testing us either. That's why we have these next 40 days. And as we begin our journey through this Lenten season, Matthew's Gospel, it offers us this powerful reality that we do not go alone in the desert. We don't go alone in life. We go with Christ. He knows what we're living with and living without. He knows our appetites and our hungers, our insecurities and our needs. We turn to him in moments of weakness and, and uh, temptation. We turn to him when we think no one else will understand. No one can relate. No one can grasp what we're going through. Jesus will and he does. True, he is God. 
But as the temptation in the desert reveals to us today, He's also us. And uh, throughout the season of Lent, we'll be saying the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 10 of your, of your mistletoe, found on page 10. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In this time of Lent, God's word commands repentance and change of heart, strengthened by Christ's teaching. We come to our Father and ask that he hear our prayers. For the church, that through her mission and ministry in the world, we all may draw from the gospel of Christ, the courage and strength we need to face all the challenges in our daily lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in public office, that they may never be distracted by the empty promises that power and earthly glory offers, but keep their hearts and minds focused on the service they render in response to love of God and neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a desire not to be ruled by evil that threatens to dominate the world, we pray for the grace to reject the lure of possessions, gossip, self-centeredness, and unforgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we may have a deeper understanding of the need for prayer, fasting and almsgiving in our lives as we continue on our Latin journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need, that through our acts of kindness, generosity, and hospitality, the poor, the homeless, the forgotten, and marginalized may experience our love, care, and support during this holy season of grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the members listed in our parish book of intentions and especially for Tom and Helen Williams, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they come to enjoy perfect happiness with all the angels and saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son Jesus showed us how to overcome temptation. Help us in this season of Lent to resist the temptations as well that we may experience. We ask all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Take it, Greg. Take it, Greg. And for our presentation of the gifts, uh, please join in singing number 129 in these days of Lenten journey. Number 129. In these days of Lenten journey, we have seen and we have heard the call to sow justice in the lives of those we serve. 
we reach out to those who are homeless, to those who live without worm. In the coolness of evening, we'll shelter their dreams. We will clothe them in mercy and peace. In these days of Lenten journey, we have seen and we have heard the call to sow justice in the lives of those we serve. We reach out our eyes to the hungry and see the faces of Christ as we nourish all people who hunger for food. May their faith in our God be renewed. In these days of Lenten journey, we have seen and we have heard the call to sow justice in the lives of those we serve. We open our ears to the weary and hear the cry of the poor. To the voices that echo the song of despair, we will show our compassion and care. In these days of Lenten journey, we have seen and we have heard the call to sow justice in the lives of those we serve. We call on the Spirit of justice and pray for righteousness' sake. We will sing for the freedom of all the oppressed. We will loosen the bonds of distress. In these days of Lenten journey, we have seen and we have heard the call to sow justice in the lives of those we serve. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining forty long days from earthly food. He consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, 
we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. O Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, a hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Again, as a reminder, this is the last week that you'll see me with the tiger stripes. Uh, I have extra special surprises this week for the children, um, but uh, I will have some surprise for you next weekend uh, for the beard. Um, it's not going to be tiger stripes, but it'll be something uh, extra special. Um, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And uh, don't forget about uh, some sweets and treats in the back. Uh, let, us, let us, as we go forth, let us join in singing number 126, Led by the Spirits, number 126. Led by the Spirit of our God, we go to fast and pray. With Christ into the wilderness, we join his Paschal way. Rend not your garments, rend your hearts, turn back your lives to me. Thus says our kind and gracious God, whose reign is liberty. Led by the Spirit, we confront temptation face to face, and know full well that we may lie on God's redeeming grace. On bread alone we cannot live, but nourished by the word. We seek the will of God to do. This is our drink and food.